Uh, I was told some of these questions are a little racy, so it's TPR, so you never know what you're going to get, right? Uh, we'll lead off with, do you prefer it in the rear or front? <laughs> that's, that's very nice. I'm assuming that it's roller coaster, where you like to ride the roller coaster at the front or the back of the roller coaster. That's, that's not it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to keep it clean here. Which is funny, because on a, a related, related topic, uh, Marty said that they rebuilt the oldies, and they refurbished it, and it looks amazing. And... Uh, Years ago, when I worked in the Sad Eye Joe attraction, which is connected to it, you know, you're the guy in the jail and you talk in the mic all day, they used to have a speaker that would play all day of this literally 30 second loop of what was going on inside Goldie's. And it was this horrible, it was a, it was a chicken uh, clucking and some guy singing to the ladies and a woman who would say, why don't you come on in and join the party? And uh, I heard it all day. So they just asked me to write some new dialogue for it. So I've been actually, I, I write stuff for the park all the time. This is one of the hardest things I've ever written because it has to be completely G-rated. It's, it's Goldie's. So it's, I'm having a really difficult time. So when you come a couple of weeks, month from now, and you hear the recording, just, just know I was up late at night trying to come up with something clean for that. So. You know, family friendly. It's fun. It's Goldies. So uh, uh, the answer to this question is, I don't. I don't really ride the roller coasters. I'm not a roller coaster guy. They scare the, the crap out of me. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess the front because you get a cool picture with the ride logo, right? Joey, do you have any insight? What's the best place to ride the coaster? The front and the back? I think it all depends on the person. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like tight. Yeah, sorry. I like that. Okay. Um, this is a two-parter, it's even on the back. What is the possibility of doing something with the old time machine ride, Knott's Berry Tales? Uh, I don't know the answer, Marty. The answer to that is what? Uh, it comes up all the time. Uh, it's been in our five-year plan before, but currently there is nothing slated for that spot, but uh, obviously it's an opportunity, so uh, as soon as we hear anything, we'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. What is the possibility of having a haunted shack-like attraction back at Knott's Berry Farm? Uh, I actually worked at the shack as a tour guide for a while. Uh, absolutely loved it, like a lot of you did. Uh, but unfortunately, um, it was pretty much ridden with, two, uh, with termites and falling apart from wood rot, and we would have had to replace a majority of it, and then the ADA laws come into effect. And you have a very difficult time with those ramps and slanted rooms um, qualifying for ADA. So, unfortunately, we had to tear it down. To recreate it, I don't know if we actually could in this day and age. Um, and that's where it sits right now, is we, we don't have any plans for it. Yeah. I always say if you, if you want to see one, they do have one up at the town of Calico, still operating. I think Thursday through Sunday. Uh, it costs like $1.50 or $2 to go through. But, uh, and I also think, anybody that went through the Haunted Shack, and I was one of the last people to walk through there, when I heard that after uh, Dead Man's War for Haunt, that it wasn't coming back, I went in there, I walked through it, I got my Haunted Shack fix, and I'll tell you, for an attraction that was built, uh, Eric, when was it built, 1942? No, it was actually built in the late 40s. Late 40s. Yeah, I think it was 49. 49, for a temporary structure. Wow, it held up 60 years. So that's about all you can ask out of that. And if you, you look behind it, you can see there were cables keeping it up and all these bolts, and it was really, really uh, haphazardly put. So it was as much as, as cool as it was sideways, it, it might have been built uh, normal and just over the years sort of turned sideways. So uh, good run on that, good run on that direction. And then the question on the back is, do you like TPR? And the answer is, of course I do. Uh, by the way, thanks for the log ride tour, it was awesome. Windjammer 2.0. <laughs> I can answer this one. No. Okay. <laughs> Will you tell Cedar Point to get a Gerslauer mouse? I don't even know what that means. A Gerslauer mouse? Is that, is that a, like a crazy mouse coaster? It's Cedar Point. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> what ride coaster is coming in 2012? Uh, when's, oh, 2012, year after. I have no idea, we don't know that, right? 
That's a totally up in the air. That would be Windseeker 2.0 at Gerson or Mouse. Um, is Knox going to be building a coaster taller and faster than King Da Ka? Which is what, the tallest, fastest in America or the world? America. Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. We're in the flight path of Fullerton Airport, so that might be a problem. Uh, I want to buy an accelerator wheel. How much would it cost? <laughs> I guess they have to win that. We don't have those in the gift shop anymore. Yeah, people were, they were really big keychains. I was wondering, what's your favorite coaster company? Oh, that's a good question. I like the ones that make the coasters that soak up all the water at the bottom of the cup. Because it really saves the That's not what they mean, right? Joey, Marty, favorite coaster company? I don't know. I think the one that I enjoy the most is the one that has the least amount of downtime. Yeah, which is what? Right now, it's B&M. and &M. Yeah. yeah. Um, do they make the Gerslauer mouse? <laughs> no. Well, who does? How much money did Silver Bullet cost? A lot. I don't know. Do we, do we release that number? Do we know that number? Like 13 bucks. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> we all chipped in. <laughs> what park is better, Knott's or Six Flags Magic Mountain? <laughs> Why would you ask that question? <laughs> Who do you like better, you or me? <laughs> Who does your wife like better, you or me? I don't know. I, what park is better, Knott's? I'm always going to say Knott's. They pay my mortgage. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a good one. It's got little boxes on it. It says, do you like me? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> and it's from Rob, XOXO. Is that from you? I guess it was. <laughs> That's for you. It's going to say no, isn't it? Oh, maybe. It said maybe. <laughs> Depends on who else asked me to the dance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, this one's funny because it's not like, it's, it's like one of those, um, you know, it doesn't have the question, it just has this phrase with a question mark. Repaint on perilous. Repaint on perilous. It's being repainted. It's being repainted. There you go. The answer is yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look at this one, man. Gospel according to somebody. When the decision was made to place Windseeker in a new location, was public protest over Sky Tower's impending removal in an influence and the decision to put it in Fiesta Village? Knowing that you can't divulge any details, do you do any further additions to knots potentially involve finally expanding into backstage areas? And will the Windseeker gift shop sell clean underwear? Did somebody actually make that part? I didn't make it up, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. So the, the answer is, when Windseeker was decided to be put in Fiesta Village, was that, what kind of decision was that? Was that because people linked arms around the, the sky cabin and said, you cannot tear down this wall? Or was it because it was like, it looks better over there? We actually um, felt that sky cabin was a little bit of a unique attraction here. And, and after much thought, we decided not to take that one down. And we were looking for another location in the park. And that's when they came up with the spot that it's currently going in. How about that? Pres preservation of the sky cabin. All right. And uh, are we going to be expanding into backstage areas? Uh, come up before. Obviously, we're landlocked. So it's really the only direction we can go if we really want right. to um, add a few more rides. Because uh, currently, uh, we're pretty much, anytime we need to put a ride into the park, we're having to take something out. So yeah, it's uh, been talked about, and we'll continue to look at that. Right, and, and uh, along those same lines, uh, Haunt has expanded in the backstage areas like never before. And has, if anybody who's a longtime fan of Haunt uh, knows what that really did to loosen up the midways on those really busy Friday and Saturday nights, it's fantastic. It used to be it would take you a half hour to get from one end of the park to the other. And that's with me knowing all the avenues, all the secret ways. Uh, opening up those two mazes backstage, putting mazes in, in oddball areas that are not directly on the midways, really helped haunt quite a bit. So, And then it says, keep up the great work. Wow, thank you. All right. 
What rider attraction do you miss the most? Let's go down the line. Eric, what rider attraction do you miss the most? The only one that pops into my head is Barry Tails. Barry Tails. I miss Barry Tails so damn much. Me too. Daniel? Yeah, that's Barry Tails. Barry Tails. Copycat. Joey? Wacky Box. Wacky Soapbox. <laughs> Marty? Uh, yeah, I was a shift leader at Barry Tails, so it's definitely Barry Tails. Barry Tails, yeah. That's good. My, mine would be. Um, uh, the devil who, who cranks up the volcano. <laughs> Just because as a kid, I wanted that guy so bad. He's yeah, missing. No All right. Which is better, Pepsi or Coke? <laughs> Dr. Pepper. All right. <laughs> Would you want to see Rob in a low-cut dress from the picture gallery? <laughs> we can arrange that. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Will Pluto ever be called a planet again? No. What did I step in this morning by the chicken? <laughs> it's not even a full question. What did I step in this morning by the chicken? Poop. All right. Can you build a Roadrunner Express? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Wow. Can we have a painted fin version of Pony Express for ERT? Or maybe backwards with fire and fog. <laughs> Who wrote that? Who, whose question is that? Who wants fire and fog on Pony Express? No one's going to own up to that? Because I'll ride behind you with a big lighter if that helps. All right? And I don't even smoke. I'll borrow one. All right. What is the most unusual item your staff has had to confiscate from a rider on one of your rides? <laughs> I can, you think about that, because I can tell you what mine is. On the opening day of Pony Express, a lady said, I want to ride this, will you hold my baby? <laughs> and I have a picture of me on the, on the loading dock holding a newborn, like a week old. Like, I don't know this lady. I'm holding a baby. I put it in the little cubby hole. I figured save her there. <laughs> Joey, the, the craziest thing you're going to confiscate. I want to say probably the craziest thing we've ever had to confiscate was uh, the person who gave us their leg. Awesome. Fake leg? Yeah. I love that. What ride was that? That was over at Accelerator. That's awesome. You gotta love that. And then he found he couldn't ride because he has to have two legs. No. So that was the bad part of it. Yeah. As if life wasn't bad enough for him. Yeah. I have to take your leg, sir, and you can't ride. <laughs> he was not being mad. All right. What is Knott's doing to preserve energy? This is California, after all. How about hybrid bumper cars? <laughs> I think they go slow enough. All right. <laughs> I think it would be cool if there were a real Jaguar instead of Jaguar. What do you think? <laughs> you know, I didn't bring that thing to my office, but this is so far the best question of the day right there. So, unless it gets beat, there's a prize for that one. So, is, somebody, is that person here? Who wrote, you wrote that? You wrote that? That's amazing, that's good. Smart kid. All right, is there any possibility of having ice skating in the pond below Silver Bullet? It doesn't get that cold enough here in California, sorry. Can you invite some Australian theme park operators over to show them how to run a real park? <laughs> wow, that's a slam against the Australians. Who, who went to Australia and had a bad time? You did? What's that? That's so sad, but you're the land of Paul Hogan and koalas and... Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, welcome to Nods. Have a good time today. I mean, it wouldn't be any worse, right? Okay. What determines the fate of the chickens around Independence Hall? Which ones end up at the restaurant? <laughs> hey, the chickens are on their own over there. And I know there were, there were two or three questions about chickens over at Independence Hall. And you know what the answer is? Those aren't our chickens. People drop them off here. People drive, they're like, honey, you gotta give her the chicken tonight. I love the chicken. You gotta give her the chicken. All right, put the chicken in the car. They drive to Knott's, they let the chicken go. That's true. We have one chicken, now we have 25 chickens. So, the answer is they don't end up at the restaurant. We wish they would, they'd be a little gamey. All right. 
Any major additions coming in 2012 or 2013? Uh, no, the world's gonna end, hello? <laughs> Do you foresee the sky jump coming back? No. No, not coming back. But the sky cabin's not going anywhere. When it comes to Mrs. Knotts, do you like a breast or a thigh? <laughs> I like a leg. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite haunt maze of all time? Eric, do you have an answer for that one? You know, it was brought up earlier this evening. Nightmares. Nightmares? That's the one that really changed it for me. Yeah. When I good. realized that it was all in my head and it freaked the hell out of me. Nice. Daniel? No comment. No comment. It could be one of yours. Um, Toon, Toon Territory? Asylum. Asylum, yeah. Asylum. Joey, do you have a favorite hot maze of all time? I don't. I think each one is kind of unique. It's, I don't have a favorite hot maze. Marty? I, um, I was a monster in Haunt 3. And uh, what I remember from those early years, uh, Bud Hurlbut used to take Mine Ride, and he had all these ghosts in the glory hall, and he had them on little motors that spun around. It was the simplest gag, but there was like 30 of them in there that were all spinning around under black light, and it was just an incredible sight. And uh, that was my favorite decorated attraction. Yeah. Uh, mine, I, I don't know if I can pick one. I've been through every maze here since uh, probably 92 when I first started coming as a hardcore guest. So many good mazes have come and gone. I like those oddball ones that are only there for like a year or two, like uh, Lair of the Vampire, or uh, even Toon Territory, because it was so short-lived, or uh, the original uh, Curse of the Spider Woods that was a standalone attraction. It wasn't even a maze. You walked in and the floor dropped, and then they escorted you out. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? As a guest, my favorite was Industrial Evil because all the mazes had long lines, but Industrial Evil was like, oh, this is so worth it. This maze is like an hour long. There's a, there's a snack bar in the middle to take a break. <laughs> you know, it's like Prop Plaza. We're dropping you off here, we'll come back. But uh, I love Industrial Evil. Um, will we ever see some of the classics return? We should vote. Uh, I don't know. When mazes retire, it's for a reason. It's because, it's because the, uh, the maze has just completely been used. It can't come back. It's been destroyed through wear and tear and scares and screaming and people running into walls and people banging their shaker cans on the walls and they're destroyed. Um, and sometimes when they come back, you know, it's like seeing a girl from high school. Well, she ain't that hot anymore. <laughs> you know? Years have not been kind. I remember it differently than it really is. In 1997, they did an anniversary maze where they brought a bunch of rooms from different mazes and brought them back, and people hated that maze. They hated it because it had no flow through. Like, there was, it was so disjointed. It was like going through a Kiwanis haunted house at the park. You know, one time I'm in this room, and then I'm in this room, and nothing matches. But even in then, it was like, I can't believe people got scared at this. Timothy O'Leary's, uh, you know, drug-induced thing. It was like, it's not scary. It would never play today. Um, and, and you know what? Perception of what's scary changes over years. The stuff that scared the other generation will not scare this generation. A generation raised on Saw is not going to get scared by a guy pretending to be on a drug trip in a black light room. <laughs> They're going to go, oh yeah, it was Saturday night. <laughs> I was at the Electric Daisy Carnival. This is just what it was like, you know, or Burning Man, or that sort of thing. You have to become more sophisticated. Uh, even when they brought back elements of Dominion of the Dead in the vampire maze in uh, Camp Snoopy, it felt like, oh, well, this isn't exactly like I remember. This sucks, you know? Uh, it's not like it used to be. Well, it's never going to be like it used to be, because that's gone. Let's see what we have new. What's next? What's better? What's greater? Daniel's Delirium Maze is has elements of nightmares in it. It has those kinds of scares. But if, you, if we built nightmares, if I showed you a flow through of nightmares, you could probably see it online somewhere, you would laugh. It's so dated. There was a room that was not scary in the middle of the maze where there was a bar across it. And you looked out and they had those giant snakes that you've seen a million times in a million mazes. Giant snakes. And there was a lot of purple draping. And there was a girl dancing and she was the dream weaver. What? <laughs> it would 
would never fly today. They would never do that. So, what is the? How is the shelf life of a hot maze determined? And that's simply a wear and tear and concept and theme. And does it still hold a, an audience? You know, there. Jennifer, is Jennifer here? Jennifer Blazy. There you are. Are we allowed to talk about what's coming back? Or like just a little bit of that. What's coming back? What's coming back? I can talk about right. Uh, there's a maze that everybody online has said this is another exclusive West Coast Bash. There is a maze everybody is convinced dead, gone, it's not coming back. I can confirm right now, Doll Factory's coming back. It ain't going anywhere. And that's because people love that maze. And until something comes along that we can put in dance hall that's equal to Doll Factory or eclipses it, it's 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 there another year. And we can certainly get another year out of it because you know, they all said, oh, when, when, this is really insider stuff. When Jill leaves to go on streets, the maze is going to suck. Oh, yeah, one person makes the maze. Jill's fantastic. And if you don't know who Jill is, Jill was the girl who was the doll with the black eyes that did the robot thing in front of the big pink dollhouse. She's fantastic. On the streets, she's amazing. The maze still lives on. The concept still is, holds true. So uh, Doll Factory is going to stay. Uh, and they were freshened it up the last couple of years, so they've redone the ending, so there's a little bit of surprise for those people who are going through it for the fourth and fifth time. But uh, the shelf life is determined again. Wear and tear, concept, do we have a better idea? Uh, and uh, you know, Club Blood is not coming back. And I think that people were like, eh, it's vampires, we've seen it. Let's move on, you know? He doesn't sparkle. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, will, I don't know what this question means. Will, oh, will Roaring Twenties ever be relit? That's talking about the neon sign, right? Bring it back. The neon sign? Get them all for it. Uh, part of our history, obviously. That's something we can look at, certainly. Yes. Yeah, this, this switch jiggles. No one can, you know. All right. Can we please have Kingdom of the Dinosaurs ERT? <laughs> You're going back in time. <laughs> Why are you so short? I think they mean terse. Terse? terse. Or like physically short? No, no. Not. Either one. I, I'm short because I'm not tall. I don't know. <laughs> I'm exactly the height I'm supposed to be. So uh, I've never had a problem with being short. I've been short my whole life, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I, my, when I was a teenager, I met Michael J. Fox. He was the same height as me, so I was like, I'm okay with that. All right. Do you have a Facebook? Yes, I have a Facebook. You can. Add, I'm a friend of a Rob, so if you want to add me, you can add me through Rob. Uh, are you feeling pressure from Horror Nights, Dark Harbor, Haunted Hayride, and how are you adapting? We just do what we do here. When you're the industry leader, you don't look behind. You look ahead. I read that on a Starbucks cup. Um, <laughs> They, what, they, what they do, we're not keen on what Universal's up to. We simply work as hard as we can here to make our haunt the best that it is every year. So that's the real answer to that. You placed lots of survey markers down in 2010 that were well documented by high profile, the park paparazzi. Are those for infrastructure or future ride surveys? I know who wrote that one. You wrote that one, right? I answered your question about that. He asked me a question one time on Twitter, and he said, uh, hey, uh, uh, he showed me a park map. He said, we see all these survey markers, and he put little uh, icons of push pins next to them, like all over the park, and it's like, what are, these, uh, what are these for? What can you tell me? And I said, I can confirm we are not putting large push pins all over the park. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to answer that? I don't even know what that means. I know that there are things on the ground. A couple of years ago, we did a topographical study of the park, and everybody started thinking we were putting in the biggest whatever, and it died. Uh, we, we haven't heard anything from you guys or from us, so that's where we're at. I would say um, employee parking lot monorail. That's all I would say. If I could get one of those, it'd be great. We're down to our end here, and these are good ones. These are, these are the, the, the end of the end here. Uh, boom. Uh, well, excuse me. What hot mazes are you positive that will be back? Can we say that, Daniel? Delirium. Delirium. It's like, how is it back if it's not been here? It's new. Delirium's new, and that's going in 
Club blood. We can, we can confirm lockdown is back. Yeah. We can confirm slaughterhouse is back. Yes. We can confirm doll factory is back. Yes. We can confirm that uh, Dio de los Muertos is back. Yes. Virus Z is back. He's good with the whole thing, aren't you? Well, I mean, that's it, right? There's probably a couple more. Yeah, so they're like, uh, no, Jeff, I've got a list here, and I know that you did not mention corn stalkers. Is corn stalkers back? We don't know, right? There are certain things we don't know, and I'm not being coy. We simply don't know yet. Okay, and uh, the last question, and it's a good one. It, it, this one, the Jaguar question, you're my winner. Trust me, I'm going to give you something afterwards. But, uh, this one's really good. How awesome is the catawampus? Really awesome. And if you're not following him on Twitter, you're really missing out on your daily move from him. Uh, and can we request him for the group photo next year? And I would say, I, we could probably make that happen, right, Jennifer? We could probably get Catawampus out for a photo. Why not, right? I see a walk around character. Walk around Catawampus character would be awesome. Uh, I actually made some miniature catawampuses and gave them as gifts, so I'll have to post a picture of that on Twitter. Those are really cute desk-sized catawampuses. And I am working with merchandise on a catawampus t-shirt. Yeah! And the, I, my toys, toys, it takes, you know, someone has to sculpt it, they have to approve it. T-shirts, like, yeah, we'll make a t-shirt. They'd be like, shut up, Jeff, we can make a t-shirt. So I'm working on a t-shirt, and uh, I have to sell at least, like, 20 to break even for them to you know, the cost on making it. So if you see a Catawampus t-shirt, please buy a Catawampus t-shirt so that uh, we can keep him alive. But yeah, I'm sure we can get him out for a photo next year. Why not, right? Does everyone at TPR know what the Catawampus is? Anybody raise a hand not know what a Catawampus is? Wow. Remember, we have a lot of people from out of the area here. Yeah, uh, Eric, you want to take this one? Uh, the Catawampus is one of those 1941 original little things that uh, Walter Knott put into Ghost Town as an unmapped vignette. The Catawampus is basically a, a one-of-a-kind, unique, extinct species creature made out of a, a bent wood tree. He actually sits over by the barn, and he will moo and blink occasionally. You've got to look for him underneath the windmill, but that is the historic 1941 Catawampus. And he's one of those things that makes knots, knots. And uh, he went away. He was gone for what, a year and a half? Mm -hmm. He just disappeared. So the catawampus just became, it, it's a symbol really, right, of knots. It's a symbol of, we were a roadside attraction. We are now a theme park, but we have never forgotten our roots. Chicken dinner restaurant, uh, Bud Hurlbut and his legacy. And the catawampus is all of that encapsulated in a ridiculous wood sculpture that moves. <laughs> and there's just something great about that, you know, that you can take that and you can make it and it becomes something because simply you say it is. And that's it's the way it is. Uh, and I'll end with, I was up front about uh, two or three months ago uh, watching the people go out as the park was closing and a young couple came up to me and they were like 21, 22. They were frantic, they were sweaty and they were saying, we have looked all day for this thing called the Catawampus. And uh, I think it was Joey who said, oh, they got the right guy here. Jeff? And I, they were like, we saw it on the internet. It's just one of those things we have to see for ourselves that it's really tangible, that it exists. Took them over to Catawampus. They took 25,000 pictures and they were so happy. And that just was like, yes, we've reached somebody. How fantastic is that? That this little piece of wood now, it, it just, it's what Knott's is, you know? The devil is gone. A lot of the things that, that the haunted shack that weren't meant to last are gone. Catawampus is still there. He looks great. So, uh, any any questions about anything we talked about? Anything I can help you with now that I'm here? Rob's got a mic. You can walk through the audience with a question there. Over there, there's a question. Stand up and yell it. Uh, the laser tags underneath the ride itself. It's mostly still there. Yeah waiting to be discovered by some future generation. So why can't we have ERG on this night? <laughs> Come on, what, what's, what's your excuse? Because I said so. Because you know what, because it's not safe up there. Because it is, it's dark, uh, it's in disarray, they move things here and there out of it, so it doesn't look exactly like it. It's not like the ride's preserved and we're just being jerks not turning it on. It's, 
They've had a lot done, a lot done in there. A lot. Because you really don't like me. Actually, you know what? Another thing I can reveal real quick is um, uh, we're doing a new show in, the, in, in for Haunt in Birdcage Theater this year, and it's being put together by some of our amazing technicians here. And I was told that it's going to have a lot of animatronics in it, and they're all old maze animatronics. I don't know what that means. I don't know which ones they're going to use, but they've saved all these robots over the years, and they're going to put a, a build a show around them. So that should be fun. Is there no vampire maze this year? I don't know. It's, we, we, the answer is we don't know, right? We're not 100%. Not 100%. Are they going to glitter? They might. <laughs> no. I think people would be into a maze where we killed Edward and Jake. <laughs> and I, I'd like to say that when we hung Jay, uh, Edward two years ago, that that was like, yeah, the biggest moment. Nothing compares to hanging Bieber last year where... <laughs> People wanted his blood, man. That was awesome. And we've never had a hanging where we already wished it was Halloween in March so we could hang Charlie Sheen, so. <laughs> Winning. Any other questions? Any other live questions? Just, uh, just really quick. Are there plans to bring back the on-ride uh, DVDs at all? Um, yes. They are looking at... Uh, doing a new system on that. We've uh, broken our relationship with the company that was doing them before, and we're looking at a new company, and that could uh, be happening at Sierra Sidewinder, hopefully before summer. Yes. I realized when I, um, I'm staying in line for the log ride, people throw money into the water. Now, what do you guys do when you clean the water? Do you collect the money, or do you, what do you do with the money? We have uh, two employees, and we give them 30 seconds to get as much as they can. <laughs> and we call that Friday. <laughs> Do you have an answer for that? I don't know the answer to that. The money is collected and donated to the local boys club. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Got one more here. Yeah, that's good. We're, we're right on time, so we're good. Is there any chance of maybe adding new animatronics in the log ride that look more realistic? Or a mine ride? Would that ruin the way it looks? I don't know. Yeah, honestly, we're trying to keep it as close to the original as possible. Um, it, it just has that hominess to it. We don't want to we don't want to necessarily update it and make it too modern. It, it needs to remain as log ride and mine. Yeah. Joey, I think you can answer this. Wasn't there a point in early, mid-90s, right before the explosion tunnel, we put a new guy there, like this old guy with a big mustache, and he would go, there's blast in ahead. And I just remember the first time riding through going, yeah, yeah, oh, what is that? That guy doesn't fit. You know what I mean? It's that kind of jarring. It's like when you have a nice shelf of all, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal myself, a lot of Star Wars stuff on a shelf, and you're like, I need to move things around. You move one thing, and it's like there's a big clean space. <clears throat> That's what that old guy looked like, a big clean space where it shouldn't be. Like, it, he's, is he there anymore, or did they take him out? He's still there. He just doesn't go, eh, there's brush in the head, right? He's not so clean anymore. He's not so clean anymore. <laughs> So, and that's a good answer. You gotta keep it so, the way it looks, right? So no Johnny Depp in the log ride or anything? <laughs> now if he makes Log Ride the movie, maybe. <laughs> maybe we can add him in. But only if it destroys the storyline of the ride, you know? Because at the end the pirates are making their comeuppance and he's like, no, no, I'm getting the gold. What? Pirating, it's good? Piracy's good? I, what did that happen? Let's move like some movies. <laughs> That was a real tangent I went off, I'm sorry. Oh, Johnny Depp's great in the ride, what am I talking about? Any other questions? How, how come Kira Knightley's not in the ride? That's what I want to know. And they told us, she's too thin to make a robot out of. Um, <laughs> Dear Knotts, I was at West Coast Bash. Daniel's laughing, the guy who made the Karen Carpenter Bulimia Center in the asylum. Ten pounds till I'm pretty, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, how much longer are Montezuma's days? There's no... Keep it. Yeah, as far as I know, we're going to keep repairing it and keeping it running as long as we can. 
It takes up yeah. such a space. It takes up such a space. It's the easiest way.